Hello, up all good. Big shout out to KR Couriers and Transport Limited for all your support. Thanks to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes. Okay, so I've got no idea where this upload's going. I'm just on a random one at the moment. Um, I do want to make one thing clear that I'll never put someone down to make myself feel better. There's people out there on podcasts who can roast the living daylights out of, out of everyone for all I care. And, you know, I just see that as someone putting someone else down to elevate their own insecurities because they feel shit about themselves, you know, and I I don't feel shit about myself and I'll shine a, a positive light on, you know, the people I speak about because I've had experiences with them. Some people, yeah, I'll share my me, me honest experience and my opinion, but I won't put them down and hate on them. You know, hate is like cancer. You know, the more you hate, the more it spreads, it permeates within your life, you know. Have you ever had that one where you've walked into a room and it's just, there's a cloud in there and the atmosphere is just horrible? You know, I've, I've had that when I was a kid going, you know, into my own home. You know, I'd walk into my ma's and you'd go into the front room where my dad was and it'd just be just dead negative, dead black and dark. And, you know, that's where I kind of like decided to just spend more time on the streets you know, mix, mix, mix up with the wrong people. You know, and um, they were my family. You know, street life, I was quite feral growing up. You know, and I, I just, you know, talking about feral, talking about like putting people down. I've just recently done a podcast and it's going to go up on Friday. Lee Brown, now Lee, he's going to get some aid. He's going to get some love. That's just how it is. People are going to have to their opinions, you know, and, and their views, and that's okay. You know, but if you're going to put someone down without listening to the story first, then you're quite close-minded, and I just don't agree with that. And I've, I've spoke to Lee prior to him coming on, and I've said, look, you're going to you're gonna be hot here with um, a few aces, and he went, yeah, it's fine, I'm all right with that. You know, I know what I've done. No, but it's, it's about what I'm doing. I'm taking responsibility and being accountable for my life. I'm changing it. I'm willing. I want to share a story. You know, crime doesn't pay. And I sat there and I listened to him. And I know Lee, because, you know, we lived on the same estate. You know, I was a lot older, probably about a decade above him. You know, but I seen him as a kid and, you know, and I seen how difficult it was in that area. It was inevitable that you were going to end up looking a like grafter. In prison, just jail bait. That's what Chatsworth, Chatsworth estate for me was going up. It was just jail bait. You know, I went from living in Speak to the South End from the crack and the brown within 12 months and in jail within three. And that cycle of in and out constantly, that's just how it was. Yeah, whew. yeah these little uploads. You know, quite random, but I've had, you know, my own stuff in the past that hasn't been positive, you know. You talk about, like, robbing cars and, and you know, and, and being a gangster and a drug dealer, you know. I could never be a drug dealer because it'd be my own best customer. I tried it once. I smoked the living daylights out of the parcel. <laughs> That's just how it was. But I tell you what, I, I, I was quite, um, this fella gave me, a role, I say a role in the drug dealing world one time. I was only young, oh, 20 something. I was living on Shield Road. Give me a parcel of white and brown. Give me a phone. He said to me, look, a few of the a few of the lads have said, Don't trust you, but I'm gonna give you a chance here. Yeah, and I was all made up, give me a little bit of a job. Because to me that was work. <laughs> that was work, you know what I mean? That was like a nine to five. You know, I, I could also fund my own abbey. Guess this little um, room in this house of his on Shield Road. The number's out there, it starts ringing. And I was one of those those drug dealers that had sprint down those stairs and meet you in no time because I know what it's like you know, when you're scoring. And especially when you're rattling and you're in the grip and you're on the phone and you're going, All right, all right, Paddy, where are you, lad? Just round the corner. All right, mate, sound. 
What corner? How long, lad? Five minutes? Ah, oh, that's right. Five minutes goes by. And where are you, lad? You be you there now? Yeah? Where are you? It's round the corner. Alright, Sans. I'll wait here. An hour goes by. It's fucking pissing time. Paddy, where are you, lad? You're on your way. Ah, oh, come on, lad. Fucking dying here. Do you know what? You'd be thinking, I'm going to smash his head in when he gets here. I can't wait to fucking see him. I'm going to pull him right through that fucking car window and I'll smash his face all over the gap. Right, because that's what you do. Right? Well, I do anyway. The minute he turns up, all well, that goes out the window. It's just relief. You know, we could be three hours late telling you he's there five minutes, but I wasn't. So I was one of those. Straight down the stairs. Shave you up, and that's just how it was. Um, didn't last long. Didn't last, um, didn't last, like, longer than a month, to be honest. <laughs> Ended up tanning the parcel. It's doing well for a bit. You know, getting the dough, here you are. And then just tanning the life out of it. Um, but yeah, you know, I remember, like, I think it was just, he gave me a car as well, the kid. A messy valve, a little metro. He had two of them. These two birds were grafting with them as well. Two out of sounders. And, um, I used to go out and just do little drop-offs. Oh, fucking no licence, just got a ghetto licence, by the way. And I was uh, driving down Fairfield, well, it's, it's, it's Kenny, isn't it? Down Kenny, one of the high streets, one of, um, one of the side roads. Next thing, there's fucking plop behind me. Like a shark just cruising, and I'm fucking panicking. All the anxieties on me, just floors it. Right there, just took chase. I'm bombing these streets thinking I'm stealing moss, I'm gonna get away. I can't fucking drive to save my life. I'm just flooring it, don't even know where the gears are properly. Next thing, as I come round the corner, I've hit another plug car straight on, smash this other car behind me, has hit me sides on, I've tried to reverse. You know, I'm fucking going forward, reversing, I'm doing everything to get away. Doesn't happen, it gets, gets nicked. Boom, pulled out the car, cuffed. Now I'm in the back of this, this busy car. All all these police are in front, lights are flashing, people are out on the streets, you know, it's about two o'clock in the morning. I've got a parcel plugged. I'm sitting there. And I look. There's only me in the police car and the keys are in the ignition. I just fucking scramble them over, you know, I'm over the seats, I'm in the front. Bang, turns the car. Gets it going, ready to get him on the off. Bam, they just bails in, pull me out. Web me everywhere. Suck me the plot shop and charge me with attempted murder. Right. With the busy. I'd have had a dram that jumped out, come up with a bat and slam and smash the wind, and I've just reversed. Forward, reversed, forward, he's there. He's diving on a bonnet. You know, it was crazy. I ended up getting it dropped to reckless driving and a few other charges. But yeah, you know, I've. Fucking made loads of mistakes, you know, when I've been out there. And what it's about today, it's about, yeah, okay, I have had that horrible way of life where it's been drug fueled, it's been really dangerous. I've, I haven't really thought about other people on the streets. You know, I was the most important person when it came to, to my life, and that was just how it was. You know, and then I got a conscience. Now, he always had a conscience, it was just, that's it, it was just berries under massive amounts of drugs. When you get that conscience, right, you know, when you sit alone with yourself, you know, your conscience is uh, is enough. And you realise that, you know, there's a lot of things that you did wrong and you want to make amends and you want to be a benefit to, to your community. And that's what I've, I've told myself, I've made that decision, I'm going to be a benefit to my community. And that's why I go out there and do workshops with these kids and talk about county lines, you know, uh, you know, drugs, addiction, prisons, consequences, knife crime, gang culture, you know, our feelings, how we feel, how we react, how we respond, how we behave, you know, and um, that's, that's my little bit back, that's me giving a little bit back to the community. And I, and, I, and I hope by doing these podcasts and sharing these stories and having people on who've had similar backgrounds and experiences to myself that 
you know, I can inspire them and they can inspire others to change. And that's what we do. It doesn't become a cancer, it becomes a, a positive vibe. You know, and um, we come together and we help out. And that's, that's what they're about. So, yeah, once again, it's just thanks for um, all your support and appreciate all the feedback. Nice one.